welcome back to the Disrupt Education Podcast. We already got started. You didn't know it yet. Um, we're just talking about things that seem unreal in education, like all of the programs our guest Sylvester talked about last week. Um, because I had never heard, and if you haven't listened to this episode yet, yeah, you need to listen to it. Um, Peter and I were discussing how, I mean... A, a class and a school dedicated around like building homes. The whole process is like built into the school system in South Dakota. What? Yeah. Have yeah. you ever heard of anything like that before? Not at that level. Um, you know, I've heard of like uh, CTE schools and such. I mean, there's they're they're across the states, but yeah. I mean, I, you just got to think like, okay, like applicable knowledge, all the students always tell me when they come back from summer, right? They're like, well, when do you learn most? It's, it's in the summer. Why? Because we're experiencing things. So why are we not experiencing things in the school day? And when Sylvester just dropped on us, it was just like, wait, what did it what? Like the kids are building the cabinets, like what? Um, and, and I, I can, you know, I've been so far out of high school, but like I can imagine how much I would remember because I remember when I worked with electricians, like I remember almost every project we did. I remember what we had to do. I remember angles we had to take. I remember lengths, um, you know, the different, you know, voltages that that some I could work with and some I couldn't because it was too, too big, you know, Um can you imagine doing that all year? And I'm going way back to Andy's word, but imagine, but now, you know, you have this CTE stuff um, in, in these, these places for students to show what they know. That's what we call it in business. Show what you know. I mean, CTE is the future. Yeah. I can't, I, I, I don't, I can't imagine being part of a school district that is not taking advantage of unique opportunities and partnerships because it's like, it's untapped potential. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about in the past, like remove the red tape, figure out how to, how to integrate it. And like, you know, it, apparently South Dakota is the place that you need to talk to if this is something you're interested in, because it's fully aligned. Like Sylvester mm -hmm. was talking about from the local level, all the way up, through the state and that kind of support is the longevity um that you're gonna have and it i'm sure it it it's messy and it's not perfect and there are disruptions just like in in anything but it it sounds unreal but it has to be the future and then what we talked about on the podcast i i, I really think if you haven't listened to that episode but you need to hear it again is Think of the community growth that you can have in five to 10 years with that kind of investment in the community where the school is literally a part of building it. And then what you're talking about with remembering it, you, if you build a house that somebody <laughs> lived in, in your community that you could maybe live in someday, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know about your parents, but my parents, whenever we're traveling, like my dad moved a bunch of times when he was a kid in like all these different places in Minnesota and Wisconsin. If we go on a road trip, I kid you not, he's like, oh, let's pull off and let's see my home that I lived in when I was like eight years old. And he's like, so like all these memories come up and he's, he's like overjoyed to be in, in the area. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you still lived in the area or what kind of like home, home feelness, uh, you know, just draw to your community that you would have by having those stakes built at mm -hmm. a formative age and being part of that community development. I mean, I just, I can't imagine a better way to build community and yeah. get people to want to live in the community than by investing in it through an educational process. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, I want to challenge all our listeners just to just take a moment and go back into your educational journey. Uh, you may still be in it, but um, think about one thing that you built 
that you actually tangibly built. It could be in an art class. It could have been in, in my case, it was an industrial arts class. Um, it could, it could have been in a science class or whatever, but you can't, you remember that, right? You do. Right. So mine is when you start talking about like the house thing, I still remember building and being a part of a yard barn that we built in seventh grade. Right. Like, yes, Mr. Norris, I think he passed away, but like he was the guy who like we were on the band saws. We were doing eight, seventh grade, Allie. Like if you can imagine little me on a band saw. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like I, I remember those, those things. So do you have something you remember that you built? I have a lot. I'm going to highlight my senior, um, physics class with Mr. Mm -hmm. Ruzak because I built probably the most memorable things I have. I have definitely have memories from middle school shop class, industrial arts, what you mm -hmm. technology education, I think is what maybe it was even called, but I built so many things in that um, class, like we built an energy cart, a home wiring project. I built a trebuchet, not a catapult, not to be mistaken for a catapult. They are different. Okay. I know. <laughs> I mean, you got to um, drop knowledge now. Like, okay. <laughs> we, we built a, a, a Rube Goldberg project. That's like basically a mousetrap game. That was like, it, I mean, just, the types of physical things that we built. And a lot of it was out of school homework, which, you know, there are equity issues around that, sure. um, you know, nowadays, which I don't know the level. I know he still teaches at the high school I went to. I wonder what his hmm. 12th grade physics class still looks like and, and everything. But all of those projects, like, I mean, I had my, I, it's possible. I think I still have my home wiring project in some storage, you know, I mean, now I should, I should add my, my dad is like a master electrician. So mm -hmm. he would have some like sentimental, like, you know, keep that um, project. Cause he definitely helped me with it. Cause I mean, of course I couldn't do it like the standard way. Right. But if you have a dad that knows that kind of stuff, well, <laughs> use your assets, you know, <laughs> you have to make it better, but all this is it like, I, I I'm thinking about these little builds relative to building a whole house. Right. And even if, I mean, even if the part that you designed was like, you laid like this one little corner, you know, you did like the, the wall, um, uh, you installed a, a cabinet or, you know, you laid flooring in one section or you wired you helped wire this one part. Mm -hmm. I don't care like what your, how big or how small your contribution is. And, and I mean, like from kindergarten to high school, like, right. Like what if the kindergartners are out there like laying seed grass? Like, I, I mean, I don't know what right. you could totally level the contribution, but every single person, they would remember their contribution. Yeah. It would yeah. be, you'd never forget it. Mm -hmm. Like I, I laid that, I laid those stones. Yeah. Right. I planted that tree. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true. Like, I mean, if you think about that um, in each community, how much can you like really do? I think there's a lot. And I think that the first thing we start thinking about in education, unfortunately, are the blockers like, yeah, but what about what about what about? Um, all right. You start knocking them down one by one. Right. So, OK, that's that's something we need to deal with. Great. Let's do this. What's the next thing that, okay, well, we can't do it this way. All right, let's find a way to do it. Um, I think we're too easy, and we've said this before on the podcast, we're too easily just shied away to get back into our traditional role. Um, and, I, you know, there's so many different things that that we can do here um, and, and show our students. Um, I, I was talking to one of my current um, career internship students, and she wants to be a vet technician or maybe even go all the way to be a, a veterinarian. Um, and I asked her, like, what was it? What made you think of that? And, you know, she gave me the old, you know, I love animals. I'm like, that's great. But my grandfather was actually a veterinarian. And he was like, yeah, I did too. But you are seeing animals at their worst, right? Like, and, and you had to deal. With it. So, so can you tell me, like, is there more? I mean, because you can't just love animals. 
in the story she told me she's an equestrian she rides horses and she said uh you know we take care of horses in the stable and at one time one of the horses i can't remember she said it was choking or whatever but couldn't get air and a vet came in now i'd pass out for anybody so if you want to just you know mute this for a minute did a trach on the horse right there like literally she was like it cut they cut the hole so the horse could breathe and she's like i thought that was the coolest thing ever and i was like i would have thrown up but that's good for you <laughs> it's not for me but see like i think when you're out and about in a school situation you know those happenstance things that happen people start seeing things let's just say like people are like redoing uh, a corner of maybe like uh landscaping of a of an intersection right which can be done by high school students because i know every community doesn't have enough people in the community to actually pay to work for that right or maybe we do pay them but then they can start seeing angles and safety of turns and such like that like just these things start showing up when you start having conversations and you're active rather than you know the the traditional way of sitting and getting so um that's you know sylvester was bringing some big stories there and, and um, i have been up to evanston uh high school uh here and they are amazing i mean they do some pretty cool stuff um our high school has a math and construction class right um but that's as far as some of it goes so i think you know the frustration is okay this is working what else or yes and and I don't think we say that enough uh, in education. I think that, uh, you know, but I also think CTE is the way to go because I'll, I'll, I'll throw this thought out at you, right? I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, the stadium at Vanderbilt um, University. So I, I don't know if anybody of my, our listeners might have heard any of this, but um, <laughs> it's the football season. And um, at the beginning of the season, actually half, they're not going to be finished with the stadium. They were supposed to be right? But they're not. So how ironic is it that we don't have enough people to finish a college stadium for a college, but we don't have enough. I mean, part of it was manpower, right? Like, like they didn't have enough workers to, to finish the stadium for a college where we're sending everybody. There you go. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, we were talking on a different episode about the lack of um, all the kind of assist roles in a school, mm -hmm. whether that's secretarial or janitorial yep. or AIDS type. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's ways to, I know my high school, one of the high schools I taught at, they have um, a mentor gym class that mm -hmm. basically um, students get to learn about what it would be like to, to provide kind of special education services in a teacher or paraprofessional type setting through gym right so they get to get a gym credit but then they're mentoring it's mm -hmm. called mentor gym and they are working with handicapped students mm -hmm. and um what a powerful like connection i know students who have gone on to college to get their degrees in special education because of that one class yeah. so it's kind of like that experience um with the equestrian student about seeing that like in their everyday life with the horse, then it, it kind of rolled into something they wanted to pursue. And right. We've said this before, we have to remove the red tape. And I, I literally was like, okay, I have a perfect example of things that some listeners may have done, but maybe you don't consider like the craziness of it. So every time I go skydiving now, if I'm at my home drop zone, I obviously have a, a, a ridiculous waiver I have to sign. That's basically, you know, it. I can't sue anyone for any reason. <laughs> you know, if there's any malfunction or there's anything, I mean, like it, it's just page after page of signing basically your life away. I have to sign mm -hmm. away all of my rights to jump out of a plane and I do it willingly every single time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I guess what I'm not thinking about, like that I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. When I jump out of this plane, it's amazing. It's life giving. It's like total freedom. Mm -hmm. And yes, there is some like red tape that I have to cross over in order to to get to that 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 freedom feeling. Right. And 
it's letting go of a lot of fear. And I remember the first time watching like the videos and the training and everything. Of course, we go back to the experience. I mean, it was terrifying. And I was like, oh my gosh, I could die. And I think that is kind of where education is at, is that they are not willing to cre- create the, the form, let people mm-hmm. sign away. Yeah. Like, you know, they would they would do it. I know families that would, they would love to be part of the South Dakota school district, this Evanston school district. Mm-hmm. And they would sign away all of this liability, this red tape to give kids exposure to these types of experience because they're so much better, richer, and more meaningful than sitting in a traditional classroom and taking notes. And like, okay, if my kid got cut and had to get stitches, it's the price you pay. I mean, right. like some people obviously are, they're going to be like, no, that's not a price I'm willing to pay. Okay. Totally right. fine. But like, whatever, you know, if, if, if that is something that is on people's minds, it's like, we have to have those conversations to be like, look at every time you get in the vehicle, a car, you're so much more likely to get injured or hurt than, than skydiving, by the way, Mm -hmm. (laughs) lots of those steps or snowmobiling, more people die snowmobiling. (laughs) I'm just got to plug this because people think that skydiving is really dangerous and it's not Right. a whole nother discussion. But the point is people think that allowing kids to be around tools and construction and like, you know, on the side of the road, doing something is like, gonna endanger them it's like if we ha- yes we want to protect kids and we want them to be in a safe environment but you can't bubble wrap them forever mm-hmm. and <laughs> at what point does it really stifle the experiences that we're allowing them so sylvester's work and i loved what he he said is basically like take time to reflect to find opportunities for students because even if you're not willing to like let your kid go on the side of the road and like do construction work there are other opportunities that can put them in the middle of a field far away from, you know, crazy mm-hmm. obstacles that they could still be <laughs> part of. <laughs> like the so much in education feels like a rush. I know I've been in it, right? You're under yeah. this bell schedule every day, like it feels like you're at this like racing pace and it doesn't need to be that way. And 100%. there's opportunities there to for a lot. I like, I like what you said about, I was just like, when you were talking about that 200 page lawyer document that you had to sign, but I, I would do it. Like I would do it for my kids. Like, let's go, like, get out, get out of the building. And, 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 and I think there's more parents out there that, that are willing to do that than we know. Um, it's just that they haven't been asked or they haven't been presented that, that kind of idea. Um, I remember back, um, you know, maybe about 100 episodes ago, I will put it into this episode note, um, the Wildling School in Australia, I interviewed those two co-founders, and they were the same thing. They just give a, you know, a a 10-year-old a knife and say, go out into the wilderness and cut down, you know, part of whatever, and they were out, they're always outside. Um, And it was, that's exactly what they were saying. They were just like, you know, and then you can attach the academics uh, to it. Um, yeah. And of course there's going to be some parents or, and, or some kids who are just like, no, I, I want to do the traditional and that's fine. Those are your 20% that you're working with. Um, I think, uh, what we are uh, looking at in, in our school district, um, we have an amazing CTE counselor, um, in our school. We have every school has one now, and then there's a director over a bunch of stuff. So, um, that's a new position. Uh, I'll give a shout out to Rich Kowalczyk. He's um, like was a counselor for 20 some years. And then over the last two years, um, he just, you know, recently talked to my um, students as well. He has set up not only just the college, you know, kind of coming in during the day, but he's got, you know, unions coming in with trades. He's got like anything and everything is coming into our school. And we just had a conversation recently about, okay, what if, which I love people who say that, um, what if we took a, an entire week of school and or even two weeks of school and just changed everything within in the schedule to where it's an experience like, the, you know, you the students choose where they want to go and we just we just do it or even outside the school or whatever. Um, there's, there's a lot of opportunity, but I think those are the low hanging fruit. What just one day, let's just take one day and open it up. Um, 
Dr. Stacy Gonzalez, who uh, was uh, in our school district, she's not there anymore. Um, when we were in COVID, and I think I said this before, we had one full day where we couldn't be together, but um, we were on um, our Zoom calls or whatever, and they brought in like panels. And so there's an engineering route. There was, you know, a, a building route. There were every, anything and everything. And these professionals came in. Um, and Janiyat Iqbal, who I we met, right? He was actually the 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 um, keynote speaker for that day, and that's how I met him. Um, and so, if you guys check out NoDegree.com, he does some amazing stuff. But um, that was a day where we had over 80% of kids on and they were asking questions. They didn't ask questions to me on the, on the, on a daily thing, but they were asking questions. So I think like as a school district, and, and if you hear some of these amazing things, if you're like me and you hear the things that Sylvester is saying and you just get mad, which I initially get a little pissed off. I'm like, why are we not doing this? Well, you know what? No one's going to really start it unless you do. And I mean, as an educator, I think, you know, another person, you know, that you think about is the real wrap up with Reynolds, right? Like um, CJ Reynolds is amazing, like giving hints on how to start things and do some different things out there. Um, you know, um, Ali, you talked about like taking a, just slowing everything down and, and, and these are the places where you can, you can do some different things. And you know what, like, Bring in 10 people into your classroom. Take take an extra hour and bring in 10 people or just go outside. It's still nice in the majority of the United States here, wherever you are in the world. Um, and and just sit down and talk to these people. Like don't don't even don't even bring up the math assignment you have or the the English assignment or even the business assignment. Just those conversations. Um, that, that something that small can really start to spark things. And I think that's what Sylvester kind of, I'm taking away from, you know, those big things that he was talking about, which they didn't start like that. They didn't just say, okay, today we're just going to build a house. <laughs> they don't no. do that. Right. But I think, you know, um, you know, instead of saying, and, and trust me, I'm, I'm guilty of this as well. It's just saying, why do we not have this? get over that anger, you know, go lift weights, go run, take a walk, you know, and then come back and say, okay, what's my plan? Because that's honestly, that's some of the stuff we do with disrupting education. It is. And I, while you were saying that, I'm like the prime place to gather opportunities in the community are those students who are sitting right in front of you because they have parents, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, family, friends that do cool stuff, work in the community and probably would want to partner with. And like the school, I know when schools do uh, service days and community type days where they're taking schools to do some kind of like service project, all of these organizations are like on board and the red tape can be like, you know, gotten rid of for a day. And yes, it is a usually a, a giant, depending on the size of your school mm -hmm. planning thing, but it wouldn't be so big if it wasn't just a once a day thing, mm -hmm. if it was more of the structure of integrating the learning into the community. And uh, again, it, it requires a flexible teaching model, so much less rigid, this idea of quote unquote, not doing school i'm putting that in quotation marks because you actually are doing school you're just not right. doing school the way you or i or the current for the majority most kids are doing it right now mm -hmm. it just requires letting go of what you experience to let in and that's why i mean i that's why i am full on that ct is so powerful and is the future because it's endless on how it can connect and then right all of these fortune 500 companies are getting rid of and reevaluating their degree requirements because mm -hmm. for many jobs it's not necessary and if that that's where it starts right it's like where follow the money we say that so if these companies are starting to do that colleges are going to have to figure out how do they change their own models to, to then align with that because maybe there's like certificates or badges or some kind of other 
we think of uh, career karma with Reuben mm-hmm. Harris and, and whatnot. There are different routes. And in some communities and in some places, those routes are more talked about. And but it's still not mainstream mm-hmm. enough. And you know, you can feel shackled by where you're at in the traditional route, whatever that route is in your local community. So just to be a voice of it's okay to do things differently, like to be a voice that's contrarian, to mm-hmm. disrupt like the normal. And you don't have to do the status quo. And if you're listening to this, you probably listen to it because you like that message, right? And so it's like that those are the types of conversations that um, we're not afraid to have here. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we don't want those of you listening to be afraid to have those conversations. Peter's in a school district, operates this podcast, and, you know, like, he talks about all sorts of amazing ways to disrupt education and still has a job and still is making a difference. And so you can do it even with your in the system, mm-hmm. right? Like um, play the game, I guess, but <laughs> roll the dice, maybe out of, out of turn. <laughs> well, I think um, one of the things, and thank you for that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm in a, you know, I bounced around to a couple of different schools or whatnot, but um, I think, and what I've learned is, when you're doing these things, also find people in your school that are doing these things, like doing different things, and then just just start talking more about it and just start teaming up. Um, the I, you'll be amazed, and you know, I, I you can be a teacher, you can be an administrator, you know, hearing this, but you'll be amazed at how many people have ideas about around what if we did this, and they're just kind of stuck or just you know need that extra kind of push to do something. Um, like I said, you know, going back to Rich and the things that he's done, like they gave him a blank slate and they're like, well, go, go connect CTE and college and career to our students. And he had no idea what to do. And he started to build like that's all he did. And now, like, we're actually like we work together a lot um, and, you know, we're talking about these things. So if if you're an administrator as well, um you know, truly start to, and I know a lot of you do, but like, start to ask the question, what are your what if moments? What if like, you know, we had all the money and the time and and the help in the world, what would you build in your classroom? What would you want in or outside of your classroom to teach the subjects that you teach? Um, And then just start putting those ideas together and take the lowest hanging fruit and see what you can do and start building. Um, You know, I know everybody doesn't, they realize that you can't just change the whole thing overnight. But if you start doing small things like that as an administrator, honestly, you know, when people say we're an innovative school and then they're like, okay, everybody get down to your test um, and make sure everybody's there. They don't believe you, right? They won't believe you. And, but I think where I'm working now, um, you know, the, the administration all the way up, I mean, we have three high schools, um, to superintendent are questioning the way we do things and actually saying things out loud, which is the start of something amazing um, that's happening. So that's what keeps me going. It'll never be exactly what I want it to be, right? School will never be what we want it to be. However, it can get to these things that Sylvester is talking about. It can get to amazing pieces of curriculum in whatever field or whatever area you're educating students at and in whatever level you're educating students at. Um, And to me, I think that's, that's, it's all about the journey, right? Like it's, that's the best part of being an educator and disrupting on a daily basis. Really disruption, like you said, Ali, is not a bad thing. It, It really is something to where you are saying, yes, and like, and what else can we do? Like, how else can I get, maybe I'm getting 85% of my students completely geeked about English. How can I get 86%, you know? So I, that's, that's the chase. And that's why I love these conversations that we have and what Sylvester brings to the table. When people throw those big ideas, it just shakes you up a little bit. It sure does. The, the transformation, um, that can happen with 
a community going all in on itself so powerful you don't need the federal government and the state government you know mandating everything like i want to reiterate like i i think the pandemic did showcase more how much more local power there is Mm -hmm. in um people started you know attending local school board meetings and realizing like how much power they they can have over the school experience and and so your local community can radically uh come together to create a program that gets students building and integrating in the community like Sylvester's programs that he partners with and he said I I don't remember if it was 300 or 600 school partners like they're out there right yeah. and they have different levels of the these programs and so they exist and um I guarantee you it's because the local community um was behind it Mm -hmm. and so that idea of starting small and not waiting for something to kind of trickle down like that 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 grassroots approach is so 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 powerful and then i really want everybody listening to this episode to just like what what could be different in your local community if there was more school community integration and that picture, painting that picture and starting with that big picture and working backwards is what's going to get you to start taking action on making that happen. Because it's not like you said, it's not going to happen overnight, but it like will never happen if you don't get started. So that's what I would advocate for everybody listening to this episode. 100%. 100%. There you go. That's, that's it. Um, We've got a lot more coming um, on the podcast. Uh, we're going to be, uh, you know, talking a little bit deeper into maybe some policy stuff. Uh, what are homeschoolers doing? Why are they doing things different? Uh, you know, what can we learn from uh, different types of schools and such? And we're just going to keep uh, disrupting education. But Ali, you brought us in, so you got to take us out of this one. Oh my goodness, the pressure. <laughs> okay, so. For everybody listening, I'm Allie Privet with Peter Hostrosser. We look forward to catching you next time on the Disrupt Education Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of the Disrupt Education Podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Are you ready to disrupt the educational arena you're a part of? For more ways to get involved in the work we do here at Disrupt Education, check us out at disrupteducation.co or find us on LinkedIn at Peter Hostrosser or Ali Privet. Our mission here is to help facilitate and amplify changes in the educational system through local initiatives and help you scale them into community movements. Our building network of disruptors in education are working to move beyond scores and grades as the only measure for student learning. If your school district, college, campus, or organization is looking for facilitators of this work, reach out on our website or social media. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on this week's episode or any episode, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep pushing the boundaries, taking risks, and most importantly, disrupting education.